Hello, beloved. Today is Monday of the week of Holy Trinity, May 31st, 2021. Today, in our reading from the Gospel of John, Jesus heals a man born blind, and even his parents don't want to admit it. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 499 from Lutheran Service Book, Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed. Today we sing stanzas one and two. Come Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and make our hearts your place of rest. Come with your grace and heavenly aid, and fill the hearts which you have made. To you, the Counselor, we cry. To you, the gift of God Most High, the fount of life, the fire of love, the soul's anointing from above. Today's reading is from the Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter, beginning at verse 1. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud, and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed, and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. 
they brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But how he now sees we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's time now for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity in the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. On this day we celebrate with great joy the feast of the visitation of our Lord. Listen to this from Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. St. Luke's Gospel records in chapter 1 the visit of Mary to her kinswoman Elizabeth. 
when Mary was newly with child and Elizabeth in her sixth month. It would be the first meeting of John the Baptist and the Lord whom he was to serve. From within the house Elizabeth hears the greeting of her kinswoman, and a miracle happens. The child within her leaps for joy. Elizabeth is herself filled with the Spirit and speaks as she greets Mary. It was a fearful secret Mary had been carrying. But she knows from the look of astonishment on Elizabeth's face that she too was in the know. God had let Elizabeth in on the great secret of the ages. She cries out, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Perhaps she gave a knowing glance over at Zechariah, sitting silently in his corner, silent since he had doubted the words of Gabriel. Her next words seemed aimed at him, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. You could almost see Zechariah laughing silently in agreement. The young Mary melts into a song of praise that is reminiscent of Hannah's hymn in 1 Samuel 2. We call Mary's song her Magnificat, from the first words of the song in Latin. In it, she praises God for his kind regard of her, a lowly and despised person. She praises his upside-down way of working, where he fills the hungry with good and sends the rich away empty, lifts up the lowly, and tumbles the mighty from their thrones. Above all, she rejoices in how the fruit of her womb, the child whose heart now beats beneath her own, is the fulfillment of God's great promise to Abraham about the seed who would come to bring blessing to all. Mary's song of praise is the traditional canticle the church delights to sing at vespers or evening prayer, even as Zechariah's canticle is sung in the morning. By singing it with her, we confess that we too are among those for whom the Lord has done great things. And what is greater than the Son of God becoming flesh for us in Mary's womb to bring us all the blessing of eternal life? Let us pray. Almighty God, you chose the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, and made known through her your gracious regard for the poor and lowly and despised. Grant that we may receive your word in humility and faith, and so be made one with Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude today, as always, with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.